So here you're demonstrating the advantages of having dual core. Yes, we are. So this setup, we have two identical setups here. Uh, dual core Cortex A9 running at 1 GHz. Yeah. Uh, this particular platform is called Dual NVIDIA Tech 2. And software-wise, we're running Android 2.2. Yeah. And uh, what we're showing here is SMB. The only difference between the two platforms is on this one, we've turned off the second core. You can see that on this monitoring system here. So CPU, the second CPU is disabled on there. The first one is not doing much. Frequency scaled down, idling really. Same goes for the dual core system, uh, but the second one um, is just at zero because it's not doing much. So if we shall start the demo. So what this demo is doing is it's rendering 10 popular web pages five times over in a loop. And it's also calculating how long it takes to do that. You should be able to see instantly that this one's rendering a lot quicker. Yeah. So what does it show there, Wiley? On the monitor, you can see some load balancing going on. It's uh, switching between the two cores. On this one, it's near enough maxed out. It's It's certainly much more efficient to have a dual core system. So uh, how does it balance the load? Is that so? That's part of the kernel. So the Android kernel has S and P built in, so it knows how to schedule and load balance. So and that's Android 2.2. You don't need a newer one than 2.2 for that. Uh, no. Um, it's based on the Linux kernel, which has had SMP support for quite a while. What could a newer Android do to optimize dual cores? Well, they're already working on that. The later versions of Android, I believe, are being more and more optimized for SMP systems. So the actual interface of Android will be a bit better threaded and so on and so forth. Uh, in this particular instance, which you're seeing here, uh, you're seeing approximately 50% uh, performance increase on average. Uh, so that one took about 42 seconds, this one about 60, just under 50% in this case. And this is out of the box, no modifications made whatsoever, and you're getting all, about 50% performance increase. With that how, how do you do that? Uh, how do you connect to the board and get the stats out of it? Well, in, in this particular instance, we've just got a little monitoring uh, software running on Android uh, in the background that's just sampling the file system and sending the information through TCP. We then have a, another PC back here that's just listening out on those packets and displaying it. Uh, if you're interested in the software we're using here, it's open source, it's called Conkey. All right, thanks. So how much power does a dual core use compared to a single core? Well, in this particular setup, even though it is just a dual core turned off, uh, they're using equivalent power consumption. So with the equivalent power, you're getting 50% bonus. E exactly equivalent power? Not too That's sure. measured. We, we haven't had the measurements on this now. Alternatively, what you can do is, if you're happy with the performance as is, uh, instead of getting a 1 gigahertz single core, you could go for a uh, dual core at, say, 500 megahertz, 600 megahertz, and uh, it will do the same performance, but at a lower frequency, lower voltage, more power savings. Nice. So you can keep the same performance and not run longer the batteries. Yes. That's awesome. And you, you had something else you wanted to say? I forgot. No, I kind of